Hello everyone and you're welcome. In our last lesson, we got a first glimpse of Plotly where we looked at the graph object and the trace. We were able to create a scatter plot and also a line plot. So this time around, let's go ahead and look at Plotly Express. So I have actually set up my uh, Anaconda and I've set up the environment where I have Plotly installed. Remember, if you're on the base route, you won't have Plotly. So you have to really uh, uh, learn how to set up the environment and install Plotly. And then I've done that and opened up and launched Jupyter Notebook. So I have this uh, empty notebook file. So the first thing we're going to do is to import Plotly Express. So I'm just going to say import Plotly.express as the alias uh, PX. And I'm also going to import Pandas as PD because Plotly can work with uh, Pandas data frames. So now that I've imported these two libraries, let's just quickly go ahead and see how we can plot a line. So I'll just say px.line and I'll pass in an X value. So this will be a list of three integers. I'll just say one, three, four and comma a Y value and we'll set that value to let's say one, two, five. So if we go ahead and run this, we can see we have that line. So if you compare this with our uh, with Plotly, you can actually see you need to have a figure and then you add a trace to the figure and then you pass in the scatter. And you can actually see that difference by using Plotly Express. We just have one line. And if I wanted to change this into a bar plot, let me just go ahead and copy this. And let's place that underneath. Let's paste it underneath. I'll just do a uh, PX dot bar and I'll comment this one out and uh, okay sorry about that let's see good so if I run this this should actually uh, appear sometimes my uh, keyboard has this uh, issue where it switches the uh, icons so if I try to get the uh, pound symbol and hashtag symbol it won't work so uh, this is it. so we actually convert that to a bar graph. So let's go ahead and see how we can work with Plotly and data frames. So I'll just create a data frame called data and I'll just zoom in a bit so we can make this big and I'll first create a dictionary that will contain the information we need. So I'll create a key and a value pair and my value pair is going to be a list and I'll just do that three times. So another key and a value pair and then my third key and my value pair for that dictionary because I want to pass this into a data frame just like that. Now the last comma is optional you can leave it or you can add the comma it's still going to work so let's go ahead and set a name so I'll create a list of three names so let's say Peter and let's say Bruce and also let's say uh, Clark and then finally let's say uh, Diana and I'll create an age and let's set this age to uh, let's say 21, 44, 55 and 100 and let's just create a score and well, let's this score, set this score value to uh, 34 33, 50, and 66. So uh, now that we have that, let's just go ahead and run this cell so you can actually have that uh, data. So since we've imported uh, pandas, let's go ahead and create a data frame out of that data. So I'm just going to say df is going to be equal to pd dot data frame, and I'll pass in the data I created right there. And if I want to see this, I'll just pass in df so you can see we have that. Uh, data frame with the index. Now I don't want this uh, index. So what I'm going to do is to just add an index for that data frame. So right here where I passed my data, I'm just going to say comma. So for the index, I'm going to set the index to, uh, let's say first, second, third, and then fourth. So now that I've had that index, let me just go ahead and run this. So we can actually see we've changed that index, which is great. So if I wanted to create a scatter plot out of this data frame, I'm just going to say px.scatter. 
since I'm using uh, Plotly, remember the S is kind of locally, lo uh, lo lowercase. If we look at the uh, scatter for our uh, Plotly, it's actually your uppercase. So in Plotly Express, it's lowercase, sort of like, uh, it's sort of like Seaborn. So I'll need to pass in the data. So the data is going to be the DF. And then for my X axis, I'm just going to use name. For my Y axis, I'm going to set the score. And for the title, I'm just going to call it, uh, let's say, name versus score. Just like that. And then finally, I'll pass in the hover name argument so you can actually show us the hover name. So I'll say hover underscore name and I'll set that to the name. All right, so we're not doing anything extra. And there we have it. So if we look at this and uh, let's just zoom out. You can actually see we have the hover name showing as Clark and this is Diana with the name and the score just like that. So it's not representing all the uh, information. You know, we can decide to pick the age or whatever we want to do with this. If we wanted to see a histogram of this uh, distribution, let's just go ahead uh, down here. So we're just going to see uh, px dot histogram. And for the histogram, we'll pass in the data frame. And then for our X axis, let's just go ahead and set it to the score. And let's set a title. So let's just say a score distribution. And if I go ahead and run this, you can see we have a kind of like weird histogram that shows the distribution of that score based on the count value for the score. Right, so if we actually had a much more uh, larger data set, it'll actually make more sense, but this is just for a uh, kind of test case. Another thing we could do is that we could load a uh, Excel file or a CSV file and I have information from that CSV file being shown and let's just quickly go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna create another data frame and CDF underscore two. I'm gonna do a pd.read underscore Excel just to demonstrate that uh, Plotly Express, uh, Plotly works with a uh, Excel file. So I'm going to read Fifi's underscore cake underscore star dot XLSX, which is our Excel file. And let's go ahead and just run it so we can see the information we have in that Excel file. Remember, all our uh, files are located in the chapter two folder. So you can actually open up the folder that contains all the uh, the uh, files we're gonna use, CSV files, Excel files, all our source files are in the chapter two folder. So if you open up the folder for chapter two, you can find all these uh, files over there. So now that we've seen, we've loaded that data frame and that data frame is uh, super working fine. Let's go ahead and create a bar graph out of this cake data frame. So I'm just gonna say cake underscore DF is going to be equal to px dot bar. Now I'm creating an object called cake on cake underscore df and I'll pass in the uh, data frame df underscore two, which we just created for the x axis. I'm going to pass in the name for my y axis. I'm going to pass in the price. I called it price decorated. And I'll use the uh, double quotes. Just like that for price decorated and I'll get rid of this so we don't have that uh, error. And also what I'm going to do is to set the color to one of the uh, columns. So I'm just going to use the uh, type. So if we actually look up, I want to use the uh, this to use a uh, category in uh, Seaborn. This is like the hue function. So that's what that's going to do. And then for the hover name, I'll set the hover name to name. And then let's just go ahead and run that. And what I'm going to do is to show this. So I'm just going to say cake underscore df dot show. So it can actually show that information. So you can see we have our cake types based on the color category that has been sorted based on type. And we actually have our hover name. So if we hover each on each of our bars, we can quickly see the, it's telling us this is the yellow butter cake with some of the parameters that are gotten from this data frame. So that's one of the uh, awesome things that makes uh, Seaborn quite uh, 
that makes a Plotly quite interesting is that you can use Plotly Express and have uh, very beautiful uh, graphical presentations that are interactive and you can actually go ahead and set this. In uh, the few next lessons to follow, I'll show you how you can export this as an HTML file so you can actually have access to this via HTML and from there we'll keep on learning. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next lesson.